You know it's going to be a casual, if fraught, video when they have their coffee, right? See, I did it. Hi, my name is Maggie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I thought I'd try out peppering in some videos that are a little bit less intensive to make. So if you like these types of videos or the more elaborate ones that I've been doing, please let me know in the comments and please consider liking and subscribing, especially if you are also into fashion, film, and culture, Halloween costumes, sustainable fashion, interpreting culture through an intersectional lens. If any of those things pique your interest, I hope you will click that subscribe button so you can see more from me in the future. I'd really like to create a little community here of like-minded weirdos. <laughs> We are the weirdos, mister. Today was supposed to be a much more casual video, or so I thought. <laughs> Something happened between the time I filmed the try-on portion of this video and now when I'm filming this part to kind of change my relationship to renting clothes. So I will do the fun, carefree try-on haul where I just show you the Rent the Runway pieces that I've gotten this month. But then I'm going to come back at the end and tell you more about my newly fraught relationship with renting, specifically as it relates to the sustainability of it. So without further ado, let's get into the looks. My Rent the Runway plan is one shipment per month. You get a standard four items per month, but you can add additional spots at cost. Rent the Runway also has a two shipment plan with eight items a month and a four shipment plan with 16 items per month. I'm gonna show you a top, a skirt, jeans, and this dress. Let's try them on. Okay, so I want to show you the sleeveless floral midi dress. This is Peter Psalm Collective, and I really love it. I really ended up loving this dress, and I've gotten lots of compliments on it. It is colorful. It's perfect for summer because it's loose, and so it's, it's light in cotton. It does have one little cotton lining underneath, which just prevents it from being see-through, but it's very cozy, comfy, and it has some of my all-time favorite colors in it. I love wearing orange, yellow, red, and lavender. My earrings match the lavender color in it, and I'm still working on framing the shot so you can actually see my shoes, but I'm actually wearing kind of neon yellow sandals that match the yellow in it and I could also alternate with orange or red accessories with this. I am a huge fan of bright bursts of color and I like that the pattern itself is a little bit artsy. It has that sort of painterly quality to it with the splotches so I really really love this dress. When it's hot outside it's nice to have things not clinging to your body. Yeah I really love this one. I have an issue with straps being too long because I have a really short shoulders, like from my shoulder to my torso or to my armpit is shorter I've noticed over the years and so often if I, was, if I can kind of take the shoulders up a little that always helps. So the straps on this are adjustable so I could bring it up and down. My hair is sort of a mess in this video which I don't hate. I do throw it up in a messy messy bun like this a lot but part of the reason I did it here, full disclosure, is that my hair was still really wet. It, it hadn't fully air dried when I was filming this so you're gonna see that throughout the clips. My hair is not looking very good because it's not fully dry yet but I wanted to try this stuff on for you anyway. All right next up is jeans and my cat Miss Emily will be joining us for this one. Her full name is Miss Emily the Strange Kittenson. So these are made well perfect vintage jeans. Before you get extremely jealous that I rented jeans and was taking a huge gamble please know that this was my third time trying these jeans to get the sizing right. So I do get that with renting, jeans can be a bit of a gamble because you don't know if they're going to fit, you don't know if they're gonna 
fit well. I do like these. I like them a little bit better after they're a little more worn in. They're a little bit too tight right here in the try on because I had just put them on. But the thing about this style is that they do bag out quite a lot. So I kept having to size down to get the fit that I was after. I really like super high weight. Oh look, we've got a puppy joining us. This is my dog Edie. For some reason, this look brought all the pets to the yard. So these are jeans. I don't really know what else to say about them. They're jeans. I like them. They're technically a straight fit. They do have a raw hem. I'm so sorry you can't see the very bottom of them. I'm going to fix that soon so that you can see the entire outfit down to the shoes better. I'm wearing white sneakers with this, very classic, and dressed it way down with a tee that actually says weekend vibes on it. And that's this look. Next is this red skirt. It's Love Wit by Whitney Port, the red ruffle skirt. And it seems like I've gotten really lucky again with fit. This skirt fit me absolutely perfectly. It's part luck, but it's also Rent the Runway's features. I've been renting with them for a pretty long time, so they have a lot of my data about how things fit me. So for most of the items that you're picking out, they will tell you we recommend size, blah, blah, blah for you. I also read a lot of reviews every time I'm picking a piece so I can see what other people with a similar body shape and size are recommending in terms of sizing up and sizing down. So I really like that helpful quality of shopping on Rent the Runway, but of course you can do that anywhere with reading reviews. The skirt I paired with a top that I've actually never worn, but I got it at least a couple years ago from a local thrift store here. It's originally made well, and I knew I would love it as soon as I saw it. I just have never had the opportunity to wear it. I guess I don't really wear this style very often, but I really love the trim with red, yellow, orange, I think are the colors in it, but it goes very nicely with the skirt. I like how tucking it in makes that nice silhouette. It's always pairing secondhand items with my stuff and topped it off with this red lip, of course, that I'm wearing throughout the video. Gotta love a red lip. Lastly, we have the carry top from Sandro. I've always been a huge fan of black and white. It is something that I just learned about myself a few years ago, actually. I was taking a course about how to create a capsule wardrobe, and I put down black and white as colors in my color palette, and then I was acquiring things that were either all black or all white, and realized that was not what I was after at all. What I like is black and white together. Black and white, I'm a huge fan, and I love anything that resembles animal print. I also really love a mock neck, so that appeals to me about this top, and I have really been wanting to try, even though it's pretty trendy, but I do kind of like the trend of padded shoulders. It's not like super dramatic, but it gives just enough structure and fashion forwardness to it. I love the pattern. I love the fit. It's kind of nice and easy. It's summer and it's very cool to wear, but it's still dressed up and makes you look more put together. I could wear this much more casually than I did it here, just with jeans or shorts or something, but I dressed it up a little, made it more professional or workwear with these yellow pants. These pants are a of course, secondhand. I got them on Poshmark. They were originally mango, I think, and my hair is still not fully dry by the end, but I do have that red lip going, which I feel like complements this outfit very well too. So here are all four looks. I've got the dress, the jeans, the skirt, and the top. Let me know which is your favorite or if you would have styled them differently. Tell me your ideas for that. I hope you enjoyed these looks. Okay, so those are the four pieces that I am currently renting. It roughly works out to be the month of July. I think technically I got it at the very end of June, but basically these are the four rental items that I'll have in my possession for the month of July, essentially. I have been renting clothes for quite a long time and I have really gotten used to it and I have really acclimated myself to a rental lifestyle and for me 
it has felt like the most sustainable option. And I don't just mean sustainable in terms of environmental sustainability and in terms of ethical sustainability, because there are certainly some ethical questions, particularly as it relates to Rent the Runway as a subscription service. There are many more rental options to choose from as well. But I have thought of this as a good option for me in terms of environmental sustainability and in terms of ethical sustainability, but also in terms of personal sustainability, like is this something that I can reasonably keep up with given my interests. For example, over the pandemic is when I truly realized for kind of the first time that fashion is something that I'm deeply interested in. I think there are a myriad of reasons that it took me so long in life to make that realization, not least of which is the sexist associations that we have with fashion, and particularly as an academic, the idea that delving into fashion is something that's not particularly worthy of study or of interest, that it's superficial. I know that for a lot of people, the pandemic has been a time that they shunned fashion, that they realized they were doing it for a Appearances, that idea of having to go to work and look a certain way, go out and do things and look a certain way is a trap and a constraint. And I certainly see that. And I agree that a lot of our notions of fashion are around conforming to societal norms. However, for me, during the pandemic, those times of not leaving the house, I was that much more drawn to fashion because I like to play dress up in my spare time. It sounds so childish and childlike, but that costume aspect of fashion, of it being something that you try on and having a sense of playfulness to it is what has really attracted me. So as someone who enjoys fashion sort of as a hobby, as opposed to a way to clothe myself in everyday life, renting has been ideal for me. It has just so happened to work out for me in a myriad of ways. So I made a little list of some of those ways that are all of my pros. And again, this is all so relative. Every situation is different, every person's life is different and you have to figure out for yourself what works in your life and in the context of your needs and desires. Personally, it has been a pretty financially viable option because I was finding myself spending lots of time and lots of money on the secondhand market. And while I feel really good about secondhand purchases from a sustainability perspective, it was not necessarily sustainable for me in terms of the quantity of consumption and even more importantly, to be honest, financially because I was spending a lot, especially on Poshmark and the amount of fees that they take out and the shipping costs and all that, I was spending a lot more on a regular basis. And renting my clothes has helped me avoid that additional cost. So again, for me, it's all relative. For me, I found that I was spending a little bit less by renting some really special, really unique pieces every month instead of shelling out much more on acquiring more permanently things. Speaking of which, the permanent nature of shopping is part of what attracted me to renting as well. I don't like to commit. I sort of have a commitment problem, especially now that I have been renting for so long. It's hard for me to actually invest in a piece and be like, what? I can't I don't get to send this back. I don't get to ha like have a trial with it before I decide if it's something that belongs in my closet permanently. It's a very different thing shopping for something that you only have to live with for a month as opposed to something that you are responsible for dealing with, whether it stays in your closet or you have to attempt to find textiles recycling 
or resell it yourself. Some of this is left over from my minimalism days, which to be honest, I sort of regret. I really got swept up in that minimalism trend several years ago, and it's kind of another reason that I found myself renting, is that during a minimalism phase, I got rid of a lot of stuff that I truly wish I hadn't, and so I found myself with very little to fulfill those desires in me to not just change it up in my everyday wardrobe, but to have an arsenal from which to choose when building costume looks in particular. Halloween is kind of like a religion for me, so. And I, I was a theater kid. I grew up with theater and my bachelor's of fine arts is in theater with an emphasis on directing. So again, that whole idea of dressing up is very appealing to me. It's not the same as just having to wear clothes or have something to wear to go to things. It's more about playing a role and having that creative outlet. Okay, so for financial reasons, for making up for my minimalism days that left me with an empty closet, that also led me to renting. Another bonus that I've found is that renting has been very helpful during size fluctuations. It's one thing to purchase and invest in, for example, a pair of jeans, like the ones you saw me get in, in this rental video. It's one thing to invest in that. That. and then you hope that it will be the pair of jeans that you live and die in for the foreseeable future, for the rest of your life. But if your size changes, something like jeans in particular can, you know, you grow in and out of if you have somewhat frequent size fluctuations. So with renting, I have found that to be very helpful that I can get something that fits my current size at the time of renting, that I know this is something that will fit me for the next month as opposed to something that will fit me for the next few years, that is much harder to predict. So it's dressing for the body that you have now and that is another big pro for me with renting clothes as opposed to purchasing them. Similarly, deciding what you're going to wear for the next month has helped me to be more realistic about the clothes that I bring into my life, whether it's temporary or permanent. So with a temporary decision, when you know I only have 30 days with this garment, unless I decide to buy it, when you know that you only have 30 days with something, you're going to pick things, or I have learned to pick things that I will actually wear. There have been one or two times when I would pick out a piece out of that fantasy of here is the type of item that I would like to own, as opposed to the type of item I want to actually wear. So I've shifted my understanding of, for example, the ratio of items that I should have. I think in my mind, especially as a person who loves costumes, I picture my closet full of nothing but statement pieces and honestly somewhat formal items and that is not a reality for me at all. Most of the time, if I'm not wearing a costume, I'm wearing sweatpants. My best friend even has a nickname for me and it is Professor Sweatpants. So I've had to adjust my expectations and understand that the majority of what I bring in should be stuff that I feel comfortable throwing on for a day around the house and then sprinkling in the pieces that are for my hobby or entertainment of dressing up and then I'm wearing that piece long enough to get some video and pictures of it and then I take it off. Regarding the sustainability aspect, until this point I felt pretty good about renting as the main way that I acquire clothes. I felt like I was cutting back because I wasn't certainly not purchasing new things that require the production end, the use of materials. So we know that there is a huge environmental cost to creating a new virgin product. So I was skirting around that issue. 
I also enjoyed from a convenience standpoint that the end of life for the items that I rent were taken out of my hands. Now, that's not to say that I'm purposefully being ignorant because there is going to be an end of life cost to renting that garment. Someone at some point has to do something once the garment can no longer be worn. So Rent the Runway are the ones who have to reckon with, is this going to be something that gets thrown away? Is it something that is going to go through textile recycling, which has its own environmental cost? Is it going to be resold? For example, I know that Rent the Runway has a collaboration, thread up X Rent the Runway, to extend the life cycle of the individual pieces. But from an individual standpoint, as someone who is trying to lessen their mental load and labor load when it comes to dealing with the items because when you are finished with something or when it's worn out beyond use, there's always that tough decision of what to do with it. We know that donating garments is not as sustainable as we might have thought. We know that, and by the way, the, like I said at the beginning, this is not a planned video. This is not scripted. I'm very much speaking off the cuff, so I don't have a lot of sources to link you to, but there is one that I wanna share. And really this is the main point of this whole talking vexed part of me being like pros and cons. So let's leave the pros. To be honest, I've learned that I love renting. It has worked really well for me. But now I'm facing a conundrum with it. So just a few days ago, I'm scrolling through Instagram and I come across a post that is sharing the results from an article. It's published by IOP Science, which is IOP Publishing. It's a brand new study and it's called Innovative Recycling or Extended Use, Comparing the Global Warming Potential of Different Ownership and End-of-Life Scenarios for Textiles. The study takes a look at circular economy thinking. So so as a collective within the sustainability realm, and in particular in the sustainable fashion realm, there has been a movement to move from the thinking of linear economy, like fast fashion, which we know is destroying us, and a move toward a circular economy, where you're trying to close the gap, where you're trying to eliminate waste. So circular economy thinking as a whole is accepted as sustainable. What the article posits is, is that really true? Because there is often a rebound effect. So just because something is on its surface circular rather than linear, does that mean that it has less of a global greenhouse gas effect? And the, and the article makes very clear that that is the only factor that they considered. So they didn't look at some of the other effects of various models for consuming fashion, for consuming clothes. And they also, and that's something that I like to consider too, is yes, it's very important to me to look at all the different ways of using fashion in my life and seeing which one has the least and most environmental impact, but there are other things to consider too, like the ethics. From the results of this article, which showed renting, as being the worst. So it shows, I mean like, spoiler alert, I'm sure this was kind of obvious, but it showed that renting by a pretty big margin is the worst offender. <laughs> that it's kind of like the worst option out of all these. That being said, if you look solely at those results, the base option, like the regular way of acquiring they used a pair of jeans. The regular way of acquiring a pair of jeans and using that might be less of an impact environmentally, but that doesn't mean I would feel good about buying my jeans from like Zara. But because I have other ethical quandaries with it, that is something that needs to be considered. The article is nuanced. I'm going to link it below and I could do a more in-depth reporting on exactly how this study was conducted and exactly what the conclusions were. But to cut to the chase here, it was revealing that there are some issues with renting in particular and they made some presumptions about the frequency of use, about how far things have to be 
be shipped around and that, that all those things are a factor. So yes, everything is relative. So for each individual, the outcomes might be different based on the way that they use any of these methods. Again, to cut to the quick, the idea is I need to open my eyes a little bit more. It can't hurt to reconsider my position on renting and at least consider cutting back and at least entertain the possibility of go kind of going back to the secondhand market and maybe putting more restrictions on myself. So in the last couple days since reading this article, I have already started to explore other ways that I might do clothes do clothes. One way of kind of replicating my Rent the Runway experience is using the Real Real, which I have never bought anything from the Real Real before, but I'm I'm starting to get a lot more curious about it now as a result of this study. And I'm looking at ThreadUp's collaboration with Rent the Runway as another option so that we're getting the clothes that are more toward the end of their life cycle and pulling them out of the waste stream. So that's another option. I'm also so looking into the ethics behind a site called Wolf and Badger, which is kind of like a collection of independent brands that has a sustainability lens, but I haven't researched that very much yet, so I don't know if it's a greenwashing thing or not. Uh, we'll find out. Both The Real Real and Wolf and Badger have limits for me financially. There are definitely things on both of those sites that are way out of my reach, but not everything. I also have just gone back to something that I haven't used in years. Since I started exclusively doing secondhand or renting, I have stopped keeping up with the ethical and sustainable fashion world, like people who make new garments, but out of dead stock fabric or with circular practices in mind so I've started dipping my toe back into there I think a great place to start with that is my green closets directory and also all of my green closets videos are an excellent resource if you want updates on how my process is going with shifting my approach to sustainable fashion sustainable dressing and sustainable costumes then please let me know. Give me some feedback here uh, so I know if that's something that you would be interested in. All right, so that's some of my rambling about whether or not renting is sustainable. Maybe this try-on haul with those four pieces is the only time you'll ever see me sharing that. I kind of doubt it though. I, I should mention one last thing that one thing that I don't think I'll change my mind about is that for specific occasions, I do think renting is almost always always going to be a pretty good option for that. I just think it's a very different bird to have a monthly turnover of bringing things in and sending things out. That feels a little bit different than renting for occasions. So again, I'm just rethinking. I'm not making any wild promises here about what I will or won't do. I'm just letting you know that while I did decide to go ahead and share my Rent the Runway try on haul with you, that I have some reservations about it. I'm not necessarily promoting this as a sustainable option you should do what works best for you and should keep you know the planet in mind pretty please again i'm maggie i hope you enjoyed my rambling i hope you liked this video in a slightly different style let's keep this conversation going thank you so much for watching i hope you are consuming things critically as well and remembering to have fun with your fashion and your cultural analysis. I'll see you next time.